Hello, this is Lauren Cornelius and I play Dodo Chapler on Doctor Who for Big Finish. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. Welcome back to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast, the podcast that explores the scheduled world of Doctor Who collecting, the collectors, all kinds of Doctor Who merchandise, and sometimes just plain Doctor Who. Great place to talk about it, and glad to be back. Uh, Brought to you in part by Forbidden Planet and Bags Unlimited Incorporated. We thank you for your support. I'm Larry Van Mersbergen, your host, and I've been collecting Doctor Who now for 42 years. Welcome to our 67th episode celebrating 60 years of Doctor Who this year. And as part of uh, back in uh, 1983-84, just after the 20th anniversary, 21st anniversary, I happened to open one of the first Doctor Who stores in Chicago that exclusively served the Doctor Who fans in 1984, and I called it Bundles from Britain. And that company, though I thought no one would remember it, was in a book. A wonderful book called Red, White, and Who, the story of Doctor Who in America, and we live on page 384. So, part of history? Wow. I'm always amazed and still blown away by that. Uh, You can find a link to buy this wonderful book on the front page of our website at DoctorWhoCollectors.com. I don't make a dime from this book. That's not the purpose of that. Uh, It's for you to have a copy on your shelf. Mine is within arm's reach right now in case I need to refer to something. I know all the principal authors. They're wonderful people. And uh, it's a really nice book. Of course, Bundles from Britain gets what I call the mostly harmless uh, or harmless uh, treatment if you're a Hitchhiker's Guide fan. But hey, it's in there. So there you go. We are part of the Direction Point Doctor Who Podcast Network. It is a wonderful network of great family and non-family oriented podcasts that celebrate Doctor Who in all of its all of its different ways from books to episodes to collecting to other you know whatever else is out there so if you happen to have a Doctor Who podcast and you're listening to me, you need to be part of Direction Point. Directionpoint.org is where you start. Fill out the form. There is no cost. There is no other obligation. All you got to do is make a 30-second trailer for our partner podcasts, and you get to ha- enjoy the audience that we all have. That's why our audiences are growing. So I want to thank all the new listeners that I have out there who have come to me from the likes of Police Box in a Junkyard or the Doctor Who Target Book Club or even Traveling the Vortex. Again, more information at directionpoint.org. Speaking of web links, in every episode I try to include these two very important links in case you're starting with this one as your first one. If that's the case, welcome to the podcast. We're glad to have you. Um, Two great resources for our collectors include timelash.com and under that heading, the TARDIS Library. A great place to create a free account, track your books, your vinyl, your Betamax, your cassette tapes for free. And we thank Mr. Dan O'Malley for keeping that free with some advertising on the website that helps pay for his costs. Um, Of course, you can't keep track of your figurines or your posters there, but still, it's a great place to do that. Um, If you need something a little bit more in-depth, like the complete world of Doctor Who at your fingertips as far as collectors go. The the number one source for that, of course, is Howe's Transcendental Toy Box at DoctorWhoToyBox.co.uk. And by Howe, we of course mean the great David J. Howe, uh, who is a good friend of mine and one of the biggest collectors of Doctor Who in the UK, probably the world. Um, and, uh, we're glad that he's not only a listener, uh, on occasion here, but, uh, he's been on the program. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, I go to him whenever I have a question and sometimes he's come to me when he's had a question. So it's one of those relationships. So of course, also, if you're looking for great Doctor Who items at incredible prices, because I can certify that this place does not gouge prices. In fact, I had it from the words of the CEO a little bit 
today, actually, I was out there and he said, I'm not looking to gouge prices. I just want to uh, set a fair price. You know, I'm going to look around and maybe see if I can beat it or if I can get it lower. You know, I've got lots of product to move. So uh, look no further than DoctorWhoStore.com. It's in the name and it's part of the Alien Entertainment family of companies. So if you're in the Chicago area or western suburbs, you can get free pickup from the Lombard location, which is kind of nice in downtown Lombard. While you're there, browse and take a look at that amazing store. Uh, like I said, I was just there a little while ago. He had some things for me, and I uh, had a, long, a little conversation with him, so I'll get, I'll get on with that a little bit later. Uh, anyway, um, you could also go to DrWhoStore.com, and he's got some things on there that uh, might be of interest, including a Dalek coin box from 1965 that he is trying to unload, and it's at a good price. So AlienEntertainment.com for locations and store hours. You could also visit their location in Logan Square on Milwaukee Avenue in Chicago. Um you can also find some great Doctor Who items at one of our sponsors, and that's Forbidden Planet. And you don't need to go far. Just go to our website, select Merchandise Links, and we have some of those items available for purchase. You actually check out at Forbidden Planet, but if you come through us, we get a little piece of that money to help pay our bills. So, uh, so far, I want to thank those that have done that already. So far, we raised 11 pounds sterling, and... Uh, and we're going to keep going with that. We are experiencing some difficulty with the with the webs uh, web. I guess it's called embedding problems, but they're working on that. So there you go. Uh, of course, all our proceeds benefit the podcast. And don't forget, we have an eBay store also on that link. Uh, lots of stuff there. We just got a bunch of stuff that's not even Doctor Who related. We've got some DVDs um, for five dollars. We've got CDs for a dollar. Uh, we will combine shipping on those things. And of course, you know, we've got some Doctor Who hardcovers. We've got some paperbacks. We've got a few things for sale in the market there. Um, another place, don't forget, of course, is the great Who North America. Um, Keith and Jenny are amazing. And I apologize. I called him Kevin in the last episode. I'm not sure what I, uh, you know, that's that's what I get for not writing a script. <laughs> so stick to the script, Larry. Okay. So my apologies to Keith, uh, Keith and Janie, wonderful people. I'm, I'll be seeing those folks in October when we celebrate Doctoberfest. Of course, they opened the same year that Bundles from Britain opened, which is kind of amazing. So their website is uh, whona.com or whona.com. And don't forget our other friends at the Who Shop in London. Uh Found out they were listeners when I had to call them up. They were really pleased to get my call. Um, I have I've gotten many things from them over the years, uh, including back in the '90s when things couldn't be, you know, uh, like the very first Big Finish recordings. Uh, we only could get through Who North America. So there you go. Uh, you can find them at thewhoshop.com. That's thewhoshopaltogether.com, and uh, let them know that you heard about it on the podcast. Of course, on our website, in addition to all of the podcasts that we have, there are sometimes podcast providers like Apple uh, Podcasts or Google Podcasts will cut off the first like 10 episodes. So if you're looking for episodes one through 10 on your provider and they don't have it, we've got all of them on our website and you can download them to your device. You can um, stream them directly from the web, whatever you want to do with them. You know, uh, we just asked it if you're going to use a clip from one of our podcasts, just let me know ahead of time so I can give you the okay. But that's fine. You know, we're, we like the publicity, whether it be good or bad, either good or bad, it's all good. It's all publicity. So that's wonderful. Um, there you go. Uh, so we've got, of course, also our complete guide to Doctor Who classic hardcover books. Those are the books published by W.H. Allen, Ellen Wingate, and then some from Aeonian or Amarian, Amarian, excuse me, and uh, Nelson Doubleday. Um, and we try to put all of those together in a list in publication order as best we can. Sometimes the publication dates are not exactly known or they're close to the, uh, um, you know, to what uh, people have done research on. Of course, W.H. Allen itself doesn't have any of those records anymore, so it's kind of hard to even verify. But uh, we, we did our best. We use a couple of good sources and we try to put that together. So we list some reprints that some people didn't even know existed. So that was kind of neat to know. OK, here's what's going down here. October 21st. October 20 fest. I just did that, didn't I? Doctoberfest 2023. 
<laughs> Again, Larry, read the notes in front of you. Uh, it's a very exciting event this year. Of course, uh, I'm a guest myself down there in Indianapolis. And um, in addition, joining me, and of course, I'm not the headliner here. Uh, I'm just a, an underling, or as I say, a, a humble assistant, as Anthony Lee said in Legopolis. Um, we'll be joined by the great Sophie Aldred, who, of course, played Ace in the uh, classic series and in the new who series. She is a wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, I had a chance to con converse with her briefly uh, through social media and she was just very, very kind. And I'm looking forward to spending some time with her that weekend. So also you can join my friend El Wevis Pagan with his props, autographs and mannequins and all that great stuff that he brings along. Uh, also a great, uh, a great uh, collector himself gives some wonderful talks and he's also a listener. So thanks my friend. Uh, you can see my who room up close and personal in a dedicated room. So uh, you're listening Chicago TARDIS. That sounds like a great idea. Saturday, October 21st, the collector and the companion sponsored by who North America. That's my title, not theirs. Uh, it's the courtyard by Marriott, Indianapolis Plainfield. So not the same hotel as last year. So please come down and say hello. Room rates are still available. You can get those through Who North America, whona.com, and more information on tickets to the show when they are available. Now for the big one, of course, Chicago TARDIS 2023, set for next November Thanksgiving weekend. Join us for the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who this year with the best convention in the Midwest. For more information, of course, and for complete details, chicagotardis.com is your place so far. Our guests include... And I'm excited about all these guests, by the way. Jason Haig-Ellery, he's the CEO of Big Finish. I'm hoping to have him sign my cassette copy of Sirens of Time. Also, Fraser Hines, he comes with your ticket to every show, so you, you can always expect him. He's a great guy, wonderful guy. Uh, I call him a friend. Uh, he uh, has helped me out over the years. Uh, he even uh, brought something over from the UK for me that couldn't be shipped here for some reason. So what a guy. Uh, you also get Michael Troughton. He was scheduled last year. He's the son of the wonderful Patrick Troughton. I got to meet Patrick back in 1984 and 85, and I get to meet one of his sons this year. That'll be wonderful. We also have three doctors joining us, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, and Sylvester McCoy. So um, we'll see how that goes there. We've got them. Well, we've uh, just uh, just an amazing thing here with, uh, with that. More guests are coming soon. Uh, I actually know of two additional guests here, Colin uh, Spall and Tony Lee, my good friend Tony, of course, who's a listener and a great artist and author, uh, will be there as well. Tony will be a guest on this podcast at uh, probably around that time. So you, want, you won't want to miss that episode because he's got some stories. He even acted with Jodie Whittaker at Galley One. Uh, hotel reservations are now live, so you don't want to miss this year's convention because it will be a big one. So visit ChicagoTardis.com for more information. What else is going on? Of course, I, I am still tentatively confirmed to be a guest at the Twin Cities console room in 2024. Um, and I will not be going to Galley One this year. That The cost of that show is just beyond what I could raise. You know, if somebody wanted to sponsor me, that'd be great, but that's probably not going to happen. So no Galley this year. Uh, but that's what's going on. If you need more information on my appearances or if you want to book me for a convention, that's, that's a thing that's happened i've been on i've been at consinity i've been at other places too so if you if you'd like to me to bring my my program and my program this year by the way is 60 items for 60 years one item of doctor who uh value or worth from each year of the show from 1963 to the present day now, the, tr the tricky part is there was no official information, official merchandise released in 63, but I have something from 63. So there you go. Um, new to the collection. OK, here's uh, it's been a busy month here. I, I tend to acquire things when I can. I try to, of course, look for the best price. Sometimes I can't find the best price and have to go with what I'm being charged. I don't always agree with it, but hey, that's sometimes how the marketplace works. But I now have a mint condition copy of the Makra Terror in hardcover, which completes my 1987 collection. So when we get to our 1987 hardcover episode, I will have a full set. That is really exciting. Um, I have a copy of The Edge of Time for PlayStation 4, which is a BBC uh, release, and it's only good on UK PlayStations. 
I have a 2009 Step in TARDIS in mint condition in the box. So that adds to my collection of various tents. Of course, that's my 2009 item for my 60 for 60. I have a copy of the Doctor Who Fun Book by Tim Quinn and Dickie Howitt. I used to love those little comics in Doctor Who Monthly back in the day, and now that's in mint condition. It's a rare Target book from 87. I have another variant of The Adventures of Doctor Who from the Doubleday Book Club. This one has a gold cloth binding. My other copy has maroon binding. I'm still confused because Doubleday actually got back to me and said they printed 30,000 of those. I wonder if they ran out of a certain cloth that they just moved on to a different one. Um, they, I went back to them on that and they have not yet responded. So we'll wait and see. Uh, I have Doctor Who and the Daleks on 8mm black and white film, parts 1 and 2, which is nice to find. I'm still looking for a part 1, I think, for the other film, 2015 AD. I have a radio-controlled Davros, mint in the box, from late 2004. Um, got a copy of the Five Doctors on Laserdisc. Uh, that was one of the U.S. Laserdiscs that was... Uh, that was done. And I mentioned this earlier, but not new to the collection, but found in one of my many storage boxes from back in the uh, back in the day was it my cassette copy of The Sirens of Time from Big Finish in 1999. That's the first thing to ever released by Big Finish. And my plan is, of course, to have all three doctors and Jason Hay Gallery sign it because uh, all three doctors will be there um, at Chicago TARDIS this year, Davison, Baker and uh, McCoy, as well as Jason Hay Gallery, whose name is on the back, is executive producer. So that will be pretty cool. Uh, also, and just uh, today added to this, but not on my script here, a second uh, radio-controlled Dalek from the uh, Peter Cushing movie is in the house, and also a push-along Dalek that's painted in the Union Jack that was for the 50th anniversary, mint in the box. So thank you, Gene Smith, for those, uh, for those acquisitions. More on the way, but that is all for now. There are many rumors, of course, uh, about um, second printings and third printings of our classic hardcover books that were published by Wingate, WHL, and Longbow, or or one of those uh, three titles here. So I'm always on the lookout for concrete proof of those existence of those books. If you have a book, please contact me, Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com. I love talking with collectors, and I would like to provide that proof. Uh, there was a story about a possible sighting of a third printing of Space War, which doesn't make sense based on the date that was given to me and the date that actually it came out, because I have one set of dates for that second printing and somebody else has another set of dates for that second printing. So it's very important that if there is such a thing as a third printing, it probably came out after 1979, which wouldn't be... Um, possible under certain circumstances. So it's like a lot of these things we're kind of eliminating, but there are rumors about, but we, we like concrete proof. Uh, also still looking for proof of existence of a second printing of Brain of Morbius that is listed in one source, but not another. There we go. Um, we love talking with Doctor Who folks, whether you're a cosplayer or a collector, and we've got some cosplayers coming up on, on the program too as well. So um, we'd love to talk to you. So contact me at Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com, and I would love to have you on today's show. Today's show is called Dear Diary. Um, and a diary, of course, I will explain more in our main story, but uh, can either be a calendar or, you know, something you write as a journal. But there were many Doctor Who diaries printed over the years, starting with, uh, you know, back in the uh, 86, all the way up to the present day in various places. Sometimes they were just done in, in Australia. Sometimes they were done here. So there you go. We'll get to that in just a moment. Um, if you want to know where we sit in the world of Doctor Who podcasting, uh, Feedspot has the Doctor Who podcasts ranked by the top 90 Doctor Who podcasts, and we rank currently at 37. Uh, we dropped two spots, but that's okay. We're still on the upper part of that. So we thank you for your support. I also want to thank our patrons. Without our patrons, we cannot exist on the virtual air. Uh, so if you want to see exclusive material, including special video content that we post only to our Patreon page, uh, go there and subscribe at least at the $15 level. Even if you subscribe for one month and then cancel, you've at least covered our bills for one month. We appreciate that. Patreon.com backslash Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. You can also support us as a as a patron on Podbean. So if you go to drcollectors.podbean.com and collect support or become a patron, you can support us at one dollar or a million dollars or whatever you want to give us. But um, if you want to give us a million dollars, thank you. But it's probably not going to happen. 
Our theme song is Who's Doctor Who, composed by Barry Mason and Les Reed, performed by our friend Fraser Hines. You can hear this podcast just about everywhere you get your podcasts, with the exception of Spotify. Um, but feel free to share this with anybody. Apple, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Podlisten, uh, we're all out there. You can find this pretty much anywhere. Of course, we are a Direction Point Network podcast. You can also find our podcast at directionpoint.org. It's time to move on to my time. My time is a chance to talk about anything I want to, because it's my time. And time is what we have. Time is relative. Time is wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey, and all that great stuff. Um, we've reversed the polarity of the neutron flow. <laughs> I, I've heard... Uh, and I, I've seen some parodies where, you know, the current, uh, the new who doctors are going, it was so easy in the old days. All we had to do is reverse the polarity and everything was, was, was done. And I'm like, well, my favorite doctor was John Pertwee back in the early days. Cause I started with him and, um, that was always fun. Um, as far as, uh, what's going on here with convention guests. Now I, I had a long conversation with my friend Gene Smith, who's the uh, showrunner of Chicago TARDIS and also was my partner back in the day of Bundles from Britain. So we go back 30 plus years and Doctor Who. And uh, he's he's hoping we were hoping for a fourth doctor announcement to have four doctors at this thing. And unfortunately, uh, Mr. Paul McGann has a filming engagement during that weekend, uh, or at least he has a tentative filming arrangement. So we're waiting to see how that works. So that could be a last minute, total last minute thing. Um, if they fly him in for one day and they do a four doctor photo op, which wouldn't be something you do every day and that would probably change that might be a little bit more of a pricey photo and if you wanted to get it signed it would be another uh thing as well but that might be fun um and we're hoping that more guests get announced because as we're as we're coming down and i and i asked about that um i didn't get any you know anything further because he's keeping things pretty tight and i understand that so i'm only you know saying what can be publicly uh, said at this time. I did mention Tony Lee and Colin Spall only because they both have uh, mentioned that to me, uh, either through personal communications or through public communications and so forth. So there you go. Um, it'd be nice if we got more of that uh, as fast as possible so they can build up those memberships. The day, the day memberships are now available at Chicago TARDIS. So you can go there and buy a one day ticket. If you're going to buy a one day ticket, come on Saturday. That's the biggest day. And that's the day where everything's going to happen. My thing is usually on Saturday. Uh, my 60 for 60 will be there. And um, that'll be an exciting time to get that together. You know, I'd love to see you all there. If you come, uh, seek me out. I'll be in my five doctor, my fifth doctor cosplay on Friday and Saturday. Not on Sunday. I'll have my podcast shirt on on Sunday. So, um, you know, that'll be uh, it'll be a lot of fun to, to see all you folks there. Uh, a lot of other conventions have already got their full guest list out. But Chicago TARDIS likes to dole them out like one at a time. Part of it is they have to get the contracts together. They have to figure out, you know, if it's going to work and they got, you know, deposits to make and all this stuff. And once that's a firm deal, then they can announce. And that sometimes that takes time um, there. You know, it's not not as, you know, easy as people might think. So if you're a little concerned, don't worry, it'll all be fine. Uh, the next thing I get complaints every once in a while when I when I chime in about pricing on Doctor Who items. And I've seen some pretty crazy stuff. I mean, just, just the other, just today, as a matter of fact, um, a Dennis Fisher Leela and a Dennis Fisher Cyberman opposed, supposedly mint in the box or very close to that. The box did have some wear on it from what I could see, but they each sold for over $600 each. And that's, uh, that's a bit crazy. Uh, I've seen copies of The Deadly Assassin in hardcover, non-library, go for as high as $1,100. Still not sold yet, but we'll see what happens. There's still a copy of Black Orchid in hardcover for $560. You can also get that for $90 elsewhere, so it's not really a, not quite an outrageous offer in my book, but eh, it's a little high. Um, but people have actually called on me and said, you know, we're tired of you complaining about prices. If you don't like it, don't buy it. I said, well, this is true. I don't like it and I won't be buying it. But my hope is, is that you won't buy it either. <laughs> because if enough people 
say, I'm not going to buy this at this, you know, I'm not going to pay $1,100 for this. That price will come down eventually if the person really wants to move it. And every once in a while, you can find a great deal. I mean, I keep looking for those things. I try to I try to get things in bulk. Like there's a lot, you know, as far as uh, I've got all these books and there's like one or two Doctor Who books in there. It might be worth it to buy the entire lot just to get those books. And then I can get rid of the other ones. I can donate them. I can sell them, whatever. And that way, you know, it's not a total loss, but sometimes it's not going to, you know, pan out the way you want to. And by the way, no one to walk away. Uh, I did bid on a uh, Dennis Fisher K9, and when it reached my limit, I said, this is my limit. And it went beyond my limit, and I walked away. So, like the gambler says, no when to walk away, no when to run. So that's my time for today. So after our break here, we'll have our main story and the most outrageous offer. Stay tuned. Are you ready to travel through time with us? Then check out Traveling the Vortex, a Doctor Who podcast. For nearly seven years and more than 500 episodes, we've traveled from one end of the vortex to the other, making different stops with different doctors, reviewing everything from TV stories to audio plays, from books to comics, and more. Sean, Keith, and Glenn take you on a journey through 50-plus years of Doctor Who episodes and spinoff materials. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, so be sure to check us out. And now, we're a proud member of Direction Point, a Doctor Who podcast network. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. Hi, I'm Juliet. And I'm Nathan. Experience Doctor Who from the very beginning through a classic fan's eyes. And through the eyes of a new Who fan. Reminisce and relive those classic moments with Nathan as he offers fun insight. Or experience them for the first time with Juliet as she dwells on social issues, history, fashion, and the size of a flashlight. We're the Time Streams Podcast. Find us on Spotify, Stitcher, or Apple Podcasts. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. We are going on a journey, a very long journey, through the world of the Target novelizations and publication order. Every week, we are looking at a new book, talking about Terrence Dix, Malcolm Hulk, and all our Doctor Who novelization friends. Whatever you do, keep turning the pages. This is Jason Miller of the Doctor Who Literature Podcast, a member of the Direction Point Podcast Network, and you are listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. Up there is the scanner. Those are the doors. That is a chair with a panda on it. Sheer poetry, dear boy. And now it's time for the main story on the Doctor Who Collectors podcast. As you know, the Doctor kept a 500-year-old diary. River Song kept a diary. And it's been referred to throughout the series. Um, many Doctor Who fans keep a diary as well. But depending on where you live, the definition of a diary is either a calendar where you keep your appointments in. In other words, I'll check my diary and see I'm free. Or a blank book where you write your innermost thoughts. Dear diary. Now, if I had written a, a, a diary back when I was 15, I probably would have gone like this. Dear diary. Uh, I have this thought. I want to open a Doctor Who store. I've got all this stuff and all this stuff coming in, and I think I could be successful. I'm going to call it Bundles from Britain. Well, that actually worked out, <laughs> as you know. I've told that story many times, and it still doesn't get old. But anyway, uh, there have been many Doctor Who diaries published over the years, so I'm going to try to give you a little history um, back from when the first one was done and then a few over the years. Now, if I miss any diaries, if you find, oh, wait, there was one, let me know. Give us a contact at Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com and we'll make sure we catch that information up. I've received uh, photos as well. So, special thanks to my friends uh, Edwin Patterson and Jennifer Huwars on Facebook. Thank you so much. So, the diary starts back in 1986. Now, the 1986 diary is only three by six inches, hardcover with a dust jacket. Uh, some sources say it's Harper Collins, but it's very likely published by W.H. Allen at that time. It uh, has a U.S. price of $6.95, which suggests it was marketed to the USA, but it has a map of the London Underground and Railways, as well as all the Bo Doctor Who books you could buy from W.H. Allen and their affiliates. So that kind of leads me to believe that W.H. Allen had something to do with it. I actually keep the 86 Diary on my Target book 
uh, shelf and publication order in the 1986 year uh, because I believe it is that company. Um, my my copy has a printing mistake on the cover. The cover is not centered. I've seen others with a centered cover. I might try to find another copy just to have a good one. So you can see the photo on the website, DoctorWhoCollectors.com. Of course, you have to wait another 10 years before the next Doctor Who diary, and it was published in Australia by Mallon Publishing. It's the 1996 diary. Um, since this was only published in Australia, it's a little bit harder to find. And fortunately, I have one in the collection now. Had to get it from an Australian seller. But along with the diary pages, it has a full color content behind the scenes of Doctor Who information on stories. Uh, and this particular calendar was done by our good friend David J. Howe. So there are fictional and factual pieces for each week of the year. A uh, hardcover book, not easy to find. I had to look around for it for a while. Now, uh, as I go forward, some of these don't have detailed descriptions because either I don't have a copy to look at myself or the information I found was very scarce. So as this is an educational part of the podcast, I'd like you, you know, if you have one of these diaries and that you didn't... Um, already send me a copy, you know, send me some photos at Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com, and I'm more than happy to credit you for the uh, for the help. Or if there's something blatantly wrong, let us know as well, because, you know, I can only uh, report what I find. So uh, we go to 1997. Uh, according to Howe's Transcendental Toy Box, which I use quite a bit, there is a 1997 pocket diary by Daypole which I'm hoping is correct, uh, because Daypole makes the uh, action figures, of course. So according to this, it could be maroon, blue, or black, and there's no photo evidence that a book um, ha was out there. So if someone has one of these Daypole diaries, uh, let us know. But that's been documented on the uh, House Transcendental Toy Box. So we skip a again. Uh, we go to the year 2008. Of course, a lot of stuff. You go to 2005, and that's when somebody like unzipped the bag and Doctor Who items poured out of it. And so there's actually so much Doctor Who material from 2005 to the present day that it actually is more than everything produced from 63 to 2004. So in this case, we had uh, three diaries published uh, and now we're going to have a diary published for a while here. It's it's kind of, it's just, it just, it's crazy. I mean, I talk to dealers all the time. I was a dealer in the old, in the eighties. Uh, and of course my friend Gene Smith was with me. And so he's still a dealer. You have the, uh, who North America, they started in 84. You got the who shop in the UK. They started back in the eighties as well. They've been doing Dr. Who since before, uh, the new era. And so there are a lot of people that are carrying just the new era stuff, and the new era stuff is some some of it's getting harder to find, especially the 2005 and the late 2004 stuff with the new logo announced and all that. But anyway, uh, we go to 2008 with a pocket diary featuring David Tennant on the cover. There's not a lot of information on that. Published by Danilo in the UK. Um, so it says slim printing. So I can assume it's a small one. So uh, I do not have a photo of this one. So if you do, let us know. Uh, next, of course, in the same style as that previous year in 2009, we have the 2009 Pocket Diary by Danilo. Same, uh, both this and the previous have a cover price of £4.99. Again, I don't have a lot of information on this diary, what's in it, what's it, what it's about, um, but I do have a photo of the 2009 one. It's on our website. Uh, 2010, we have the Doctor Who Diary by Mallon in Australia once again, this time spiral bound with a hardback cover. Uh, I don't have a lot of information on this one either. Uh, the Toy Box lists it, uh, but the TARDIS library does not. So if you have one of these, let us know. I do have a photo of this one. I don't have the actual diary. I have photos that were sent to me. Uh, in 2010, of course, we also have Danilo again publishing a pocket diary in the same way they did the previous two with David Tennant on the cover. Uh, I have no, uh, I have a photo, but no more information about this diary. Uh, in 2011, uh, both uh, we we get the same thing basically. Malin has an Aust has one in Australia that is spiral bound with a hardcover. I do have a photo of this one. And Danilo has a 2011 uh, pocket diary in the same way it did before. So check out the photos online. In 2012, we have the Doctor Who Diary from Mellon Publishing, which is a spiral bound hardcover produced for the Australian market. And Danilo also made a pocket diary as well. None of these, by the way, were marketed to the United States.
2013, Danilo made a pocket diary, and Malin made a hardcover spiral bound, of course. So we have the same basically th basic thing there in 2013. Um, 2014, no different at all. Uh, the same diaries from the same publishers, none in the United States. So we go to 2015, and we get some special diaries from a, a place called The Works in the UK. It was a uh, uh, called a police box diary, and it was only available from the Works book chain. A4 sized hardback diary for 2015 features a police box photographic image on the front. Uh, I have not seen one of these, and these are apparently very hard to find as they were only sold at these book chains. So if you happen to have one, let us know. Uh, it has a £12.99 price printed on the back, but I guess it was also available for £4, according to one footnote here. All right. In 2016, uh, we get all three diaries. We got a Malin, a Danilo, and the Works. Uh, it sounds like something I'd order at a deli. I'll take the Malin Danilo with the Works. Uh, maybe not. Uh, one interesting note is that the Malin diary, despite being published in Australia, also had a price for U.S. dollars on the back. But this was never sold in the United States. <laughs> Go figure. Maybe they thought about it, and then, nah, we're not going to do that. Um, in 2017, we get a Works... Um, and a Danilo diary, but there's a slight change. The, the Malin undated diary for 2017 is published and sold in the United States, and you could still get copies of this on Amazon and various stores. I have one in my collection. Uh, this one I found at uh, Alien Entertainment. So yeah, you could still get that one. In 2018, uh, no diary from the works. That must have ended. Uh, their license must be done. But we do get one from Malin and Danilo, but nothing for the United States in 2018. So there you go. In 2019, uh, there's no Malin diary. Now, my Australian uh, friends out there, you'll be the first ones to perk up if I'm wrong. So let me know if there was a 2019 Malin diary. I have no record of one from my end. But there is a pocket diary from Danilo. So there we go. Now, we go to a little bit of a change here in 2020. Uh, well, that uh, goes without saying, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, for 20 to 24, we get a diary from Hot Robin House in the UK. It has a TARDIS Time Machine glossy cover, 8 by 10 inches, 155 pages. It has the calendars for the years 2020 to 2024 with contact lists, note pages for tasks, trackers, sketches, and remarks. It is a tough paperback book industry quality binding. This is actually from the publisher. Sturdy white paper quality, which minimizes ink bleed through. Portable and beautifully designed to inspire your daily writings and suitable for all your quick squibbles, doodles, notes, or lists. Doctor prescribed purchase. Includes an ISBN number, which we will put on our website. So pretty cool. Uh, it's uh, priced at £6.99. So there you go. And, of course, Danilo Pocket Diaries uh, continue for 21, 22, 22, uh, and the, this present year, 23. So you can still get those Pocket Diaries. I think the 23 Diary you could still get on Amazon. Uh, I have seen some pretty outrageous offers on some of the older diaries. I mean, I mean by older, I mean 21 uh, that were going for 100 and some odd dollars. But I don't think you need to pay that. Uh, nothing from uh, Malin or any other publisher at this stage. And yeah, it's possible to get all these. I think the older the diary, the tougher it is to find these without any writing in them, especially if they were part of a, a donation to a charity or a charity shop or somebody's, you know, had the calendar or used the calendar. And then you can find out what they did. You know, hey, three o'clock at the beauty parlor. OK, great. You know, whatever they did. So it's kind of an interesting thing. You know, we, we go through different... Uh, every once in a while, I like to do a, a story on, on specific Doctor Who things that maybe not are so common. And the diaries are, are something that are just... You know, I don't have all the diaries myself. I, I kind of, you know, I until it was brought up to me, I thought, well, yeah, I got a couple of those, but maybe I should do a show on it. So there you go. Um, that wraps it up for the diaries, of course. So if you've got any other information about diaries I've missed or diaries that were published, and I don't mean any fan art out there. We're trying to uh, put a put a little bit of a lid on some of the fan-created things because now there's some fan-created things on Amazon, on Amazon, eBay, that are going for some high prices and they're not licensed. So that those, those auctions are at risk of being shut down by the copyright holders. So it's really important that you, you know, Stick to the uh, licensed material if you can. Um, 
so there you go. Uh, so let me know if you have anything more about diaries. Until then, stay tuned for the most outrageous offer. Hello, fellow time travelers, and welcome to the Doctor Who Target Book Club podcast, the only podcast to discuss, in story order, all the Doctor Who novelizations. My name is Tony Whit, and every two weeks or so, I'm joined by a two- to three-person discussion panel, including our so-called expert who's been a Who fan since 1979. That would be me. We also get the views of intermediate, casual, and novice fans who either have never seen the show or who have never read these books until these podcasts, including Dalton Hughes and Alison Fitzsafried. You can find us on iTunes, Stitchers, or wherever you find good podcasts, or even ones like ours. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast on the Direction Point Podcast Network. Keep collecting! Hi, I'm Rupert Booth. I am known as Paul Ferry. And my name is Barry Williams. Together, we host Time Ram. Time Ram's a cruel mistress. It's a random number generator. That also. We roll a number from 1 to 30, and that's our doctor. Then 1 to 300 for the story, and then we ram them together. Even if it doesn't make sense. Cruel, I tell you. Time Ram. Putting the wrong doctors in the wrong stories, so you don't have to. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. You are invited on an adventure across all of time and space, in a completely random order. It's the Police Box in the Junkyard Podcast. Jump in the TARDIS with your hosts, Eric Goldbranson, Asad Khashki, and Matthew Kressel. Explore Doctor Who TV stories, audio adventures, and books, both novels and non-fiction. The Police Box in the Junkyard Podcast. It's the entire who universe On Shuffle, the Police Box in the Junkyard Podcast is a member of the Direction Point Network and is available about once a month wherever you find your podcasts. You are listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. The vervoids are probably the best dirty joke in Doctor Who. They're hermaphroditic plants. A lot of plants are. So there you go. Let's see. It's based on science. No, they'll ship anything. There are probably 11 and handle shippers out there. You just have to drill a hole where his mouth is and you're all set. You know he needs the room. I've seen it in pictures. I'm not saying you're not a fan. I'm saying you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Doctor Who gives a a drunken Doctor Who podcast for the end times. In all my travelings throughout the universe, I have battled against evil, against power-mad conspirators. I should have stayed here. The oldest civilization, decadent, degenerate, and rotten to the core. Power-mad conspirators, Daleks from Tarans, Cybermen. They're still in the nursery compared to us. Ten million years of absolute power. That's what it takes to be really corrupt. And now it's time for the most outrageous offer. The most outrageous offer is, of course, a Doctor Who item or Doctor Who related item that is priced way beyond where it should be. And for reasons that you can actually get the same item for significantly less, like 90% less in some cases. And we're not sure why... um, sellers are doing this. In fact, uh, if you remember an episode or two back, uh, there was the Doctor Who Weekly for $10,000. It's still up there. I checked the other day. I'm like, hmm. I even wrote to the seller and said, really? So there we go. So today we do have a Doctor Who item. Here we have uh, a Doctor Who Annual, the official 50th anniversary annual by the BBC, which of course came out uh, during uh, during that period, roughly 10 years ago. The official 50th anniversary annual with Matt Tennant on the cover. Matt Tennant. I just said Matt Tennant. Matt Smith on the cover. (laughs) Ah, there you go. I'm not editing that. That's too funny. Anyway, uh, the Doctor Who annual, of course. I I have one of these in the collection. I've been collecting the annuals. I've got them all from 1963 to the present day. 60 years worth of annuals and and, uh, yearbooks and things in that nature that were in there. So anyway... um, This seller uh, has a 100% positive feedback on eBay, and um, he is offering this incredible book in good condition for $1,999. And it apparently is from, let's see, 
We are from the United States here. Pennsylvania, Lancaster. Been there. Beautiful area. $4.95 economy shipping. You can get it by next week. Does not accept returns, so he's not going to refund your $2,000. Um, or, by the way, $95.97 for 24 months with PayPal credit. <laughs> well, uh, here's some good news. You don't need to pay that. That's absolutely outrageous. Um, there is another, I found just a random search on eBay, turned up the copy of a new copy here for $5.67 from, uh, from Thrift Books online. They've got several of these. Uh, and, of course, Amazon.com has the official uh, one, of course, that's new. They still have them in stock uh, for $19.05, uh, used from $2.73, and collectible from $2.69. So I think if you really wanted a copy of this annual, whether to have or to read or to cut out pictures of, you can get several copies uh, for, for the uh, Price uh, a little below ten dollars, or up to twenty, if you want to get a new one that's reasonably priced. So the the seller here uh, will not be getting a sale from this one at nineteen ninety nine zero zero. At least it's got no uh, no pennies on the end. So there we go. That is the most outrageous offer. If you find a Doctor Who item that looks a little crazy priced, and we've seen a few things out there, uh, some crazy hardcover sales and things like that, you know. So not everything is an outrageous offer, though, depending on the market. But send it to me, Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com. We will vet it. We'll see if we can find it. In some cases, we'll try to buy it for a lower price just to show you that it can be done. So there you go. That wraps up the most outrageous offer. And that wraps up this edition of the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. I want to thank you for listening. Today, we talked about diaries. So you can go to our website at doctorwhocollectors.com and learn more about that. And of course, if you have a suggestion for shows, let us know at Doctor who collectors podcast at gmail.com coming up on the future podcasts here we're going to be talking to some cosplayers we're going to get andrew skilleter on the on the show here we're going to have um, tasha achilleos back on the show to talk about the new edition of kaklak and uh so we're going to have some folks there and of course as we work through the summer getting ready for convention season until then keep collecting Doctor Who Podcast Network.